What's up, GPG? So today we are going to be gutting my seats in my Miata. Um, I will be gutting the, the stock seats just because um, I will be getting racing seats, but for now, gutting them is gonna be fine. So there's definitely a lot of videos out there for fabric, or not fabrications, but foamication of the seats. But I'm gonna do that. And also I'm going to have to cut some of my carpet for, since I put the roll bar on to fit the carpet back in there. Um, I'm going for a little bit more clean look for the track and like drift build. But also what I'm gonna be doing today is also talking with you guys with like basically the rest of the stuff that I'm going to be doing for the Miata. And I have sat down and actually put, a, put it all on a post-it note. It actually fits on a post-it note, which is pretty cool. But I'll be definitely talking about you guys about the parts that are going to be coming very soon, um, the to-do list that I have to do for it, and then also future parts that are be going to be coming down the, down the line uh, pretty soon. And then also like the different steps which the parts are going to go on the car. So just definitely stay tuned and here we go. Alright guys, as you saw in the previous video of uh, us like of the Miata makeover video actually, we'll put it down in the description. But you saw that I painted the roll bar uh, teal because it's the color scheme for the car. But the carpet didn't fit back in there just because the roll bar goes down in there and bolts down in there. Um, so what I did, I didn't really video it, but I took a handsaw and I just cut these little tiny patches out and now it fits perfectly in there. So if you guys want to put your carpet back in, literally it's, it's pretty, uh, I'll put my hand next to it. It's about that much that you have to cut out. It's not that much at all. And it looks, I have to say it looks pretty clean now. The roll bar just fits in there nicely and uh, that's what I wanted. So we'll definitely get to the seats now. All right, guys, so a quick little rundown of what's going to happen. There's a ton of videos out there for fumication, so I'm not going to do, like, an in-depth video. But obviously there's, like, four 14-millimeter four bolts all around here just to take the seat out. It's very easy. And then if you have your stereos up in the seat up here like I do, there's just a little disconnector under the seat that you have to take the, the wiring out for that. But I'm going to get the seat out, and then um, I'll definitely get back to you guys when I get that out. All right, guys, seat is out. It's pretty dirty in there. I'm going to have to vacuum, but have it in the garage here, and we're going to start it. Here we All right, guys, so to give you a little rundown of what I'm doing is when you flip the seat over, there's going to be these tracks on either side. So if you take the handle and slide the tracks, so if you take this and push it up, you can slide this track back and forth. And when you do, on either side, there's going to be these 12 millimeter bolts. There's going to be two on each of these. You have to take the tracks off, and then once you do that, um, you're going to have to take like some pliers and pull these uh, metal wires out. They're going to be stuck in there, but if you give them a little tug, it's not going to be too bad. And <clears throat> if you want to keep them, I'm probably not going to keep them. I'm just going to use zip ties to do it back on. Um, but that's pretty much it to take the bottom off, and then we'll get to the top after the bottom. All right, guys. So I got all the pins out that I needed. That's what they look like right there. Um, so I use these pretty big needle nose pliers. You can use these or if you have any pliers. And the great, the best way that I did it, and it took me 10 minutes to do, um, is I took a tiny little flathead screwdriver. And like you can see one, I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. There's still one right here. But what you do is like they're pretty tight, but you, you, you stick the screwdriver in there and like, pry it off and it literally takes it off in no time but once you fold it back fold the covering back you push it backwards and uh, this is a space that we're going to work with so I'll probably leave this part right here and then take all this out probably about like two three inches and you're going to see a massive difference when you sit down so let's get to it all right guys so it is basically done um what I did was I took a sharpie and basically what I did is this is kind of where your like thighs are going to be and it gives the scenario of like a bucket seat. So I personally probably took about three inches out of foam and um, I took the big first slab out. It was pretty easy, but then I like started picking at it and it's it's pretty even down here. You're not going to really feel it when you sit down, but here's the bottom and I can't wait to feel how it sits or how, how it feels when you sit down. Um, I'm also going to take the back piece out so it's gonna feel like a full bucket seat but here we go all right guys so I'm finally done with all the foamication and just putting all the leather back or not the leather but like the material back on to the regular seat and 
what I did, I didn't use the metal little clips, I guess you could say, that were on the seat originally. I used um, some zip ties that I had laying around. And let me show you here. So on the back right here, I used smaller ones. They're blue. I cleaned them up a little bit. And then for the bottom, I did clear ones. But like, as you can see, like they're all wrapped around and it looks good. So all together, I took about three inches off and it's definitely gonna be good. And then I also, for the back of the seat, I took that bad boy out. So it's definitely a lot more flatter and it's gonna hug me. But I can't wait to feel how it is and uh, can't wait to get it back in the car. So here we go. All right, guys, so I got the seats all back in. I had to put my car in because it is like pouring rain out now. But to give you a perspective, so this is the seat that I gutted out. And I don't know if you guys can see this all the way right here, but my shoulder is basically level to the door right now. So this is my, uh, my driver's side seat that I just gutted. And now we'll take a look at the passenger seat and how it compares to my shoulder. All right, guys, so I'm sitting in the passenger seat now and dang, it's raining hard. Oh, it's coming in. I'm gonna have to shut the door here pretty soon. But anyway, I'm sitting in the passenger seat and as you guys can see, like before the difference was like literally my, my shoulder is level to the door on my driver's side. And now it's literally, I'd have to say it's like an inch and a half right here, maybe two inches above the door um, in the passenger seat because it's not gutted out. So literally it's, it's definitely probably two inches, maybe two and a half inches lowering with my gutting out. So it's definitely gonna hold me in the seat a lot better. It's just gonna be a, like a cooler ride. It's probably not gonna be extremely comfortable but that's not what I was going for. It's definitely going for like the track. And since like I'm not getting racing seats right away, it'll do so. All right guys, so let's talk about what the feature is for the Miata and the different parts that are gonna be going on it. So right off the bat, I'm gonna have to get brakes for it. Um, brakes and rotors probably, that's what I'm gonna go with. I don't know what kit or what brakes I'm gonna get yet. Um, I also have to get harnesses now, now that I'm getting my seats and I'm gonna get sway bars, and I'm also gonna get a quick release steering wheel. I don't know what quick release steering wheel I'm gonna go with, but those are the next parts that are gonna go, like, I guess you could say, the interior of the car. Um, but I do have coming up, it's going to be the intercooler. It's a CX Racing intercooler. Um, I have to, it's 19 inches across. Um, it's the bigger one just because I wanted to go for like I'm gonna go for track and drift so I want more uh, so it doesn't get heat soak and then I'm also going with the mega squirt plug and play 2 I have that and then I just want to give you a gist it's gonna be two and a half inch piping all around so it's like a I'm not sure what type of I think it's I'm not sure but anyways two and a half inch piping all around and this is gonna be painted teal so I'm gonna get to that and then uh, it's just the rubber couplings. I, I picked black just because it's gonna go good with the teal combo. And then this is like a knockoff Grady blow off valve that came with the CX racing kit. So pretty pumped to put that on. Um, I've read reviews online that, you know, they kind of leak and stuff. So I'm gonna have to see how it sounds and how it works on my car. But overall, I have the intercooler and I have the plug and play. I have to get a few more things to put the, the Mega Squirt in there. Um, but it's definitely coming along and I'm pretty pumped about that. So those are definitely the main things that are going to be going on here in the next month, maybe in the next few weeks. So definitely stay tuned for the videos with that. And, um, the turbo build is definitely still going on. I have to go grab a T25 turbo. That's what I'm going with. And I have to go get a cast iron manifold. I'm going to go with that just because in the future, um, it just lasts longer, cast iron lasts longer, and people are gonna be questioning why T25. It just spools up faster. I mean, there's gonna definitely be debate about that, but I'm gonna go with T25 for now, just because the way um, it connects, and there's a lot of different kits out there for the Miata, so it's easier, and easier for you guys if you wanna follow that. But definitely stay tuned, guys. There's gonna be a lot more content for the Miata, and I hope you guys enjoy, and always remember, like, comment, and subscribe, GPG. Peace out, guys.